So here's some general guidance in reviewing the California Revenue and Taxation Code. The California statutes are contained in 29 separate codes, and the 24th one alphabetically is the Revenue and Taxation Code. All 29 codes have general provisions applicable to reading and interpreting the code's sections. The following are some of the general provisions of the Revenue and Taxation Code. Section 1 says that the Act is known as the Revenue and Taxation Code. Section 2 says the provisions of the Code, insofar as they're substantially the same as existing statutory provisions relating to the same subject matter, are to be construed as restatements and continuations and not as new enactments. Section 5 says that the general provisions set forth uh, herein are the construction of this Code. They'll govern the construction. Section 6 is division, part, chapter, article, and section headings are not to be affecting the scope, meaning, or intent of the actual provisions of the code. Section 7 says that whenever a power is granted to a person or a board or a duty imposed upon them, that it may be exercised or performed by any deputy or person authorized. Section 8 says that writing includes any form of recorded message capable of comprehension by ordinary visual means. Section 9 says that when any reference is made to any portion of the code, that the reference applies to all amendments and additions. Section 10 says that the present tense includes the past and future tenses, and the future tense includes the present. Section 12 says the masculine gender includes the feminine and neuter. Section 12.2 defines the term spouse to include a registered domestic partner. Section 13 states that the singular number includes the plural and the plural the singular. Section 16 says that the term shall is mandatory while the term may is permissive. Section 17 defines the term oath to include affirmation and written declarations that are signed under penalties of perjury. Section 19 defines a person to include a person, firm, partnership, general partner of a partnership, limited liability company, registered limited liability partnership, foreign limited liability partnership, association, corporation, company, syndicate, estate, trust, business trust, or organization of any kind. Section 24 provides that no act in all the proceedings for raising revenue by taxation is illegal on account of informality or because it was not completed within the required time. Section 25 provides that an, unless expressly provided otherwise, that any provision of this code may be given in any manner prescribed in the Code of Civil Procedure for service by mail. Section 26 says that if any provision of the code is held invalid, that the remainder of the code is not affected by it. Section 29 provides that whenever any official is authorized to commence an action for the violation of any law relating to revenue or to compel specific performance of a law, that he or she may designate the county in which the action is to be commenced and prosecuted. Section 30 says that the courts of this state must recognize and enforce liabilities uh, for taxes lawfully imposed by any other state or their political subdivisions, which extends a like comity to this state, the state of California. Section 31 says that the attorney general or an appropriate official of any political subdivision of the state may bring suits in the courts of other states to collect taxes legally due to the state of California or any political subdivision of it. Section 36 says that whenever any notice or other communication is required by the code to be mailed by registered mail, that the mailing of the notice or other communication by certified mail is deemed to be sufficient compliance. And finally, there's section 36.5 that says whenever this code, the Revenue Tax Code, requires the tax collector to publish a notice in a newspaper that the tax collector must also provide notice on the tax collector's regularly maintained internet website.